my name is Jerome Rose, and this is uh, Leonidas Economakis, my friend and colleague at the European University Institute in Florence, in Italy. Um, we are both uh, PhD researchers there, and we're here at the conference on street politics in the age of austerity at the University of Montreal. Um, we were here to present our paper, um, which basically looks at the question of how social movements spread. And we are looking at uh, three particular movements, which we actually consider to be part of the same movement family. Um, these are the anti-austerity protests, as, as they're usually called in Spain and Greece, and the Occupy movement in the US. And we think these are all part of the same movement that we call the real democracy movement. And basically we're asking the question, how did this movement, which emphasizes direct democracy, which emphasizes horizontality, which emphasizes autonomy from political parties and, and labor unions, how did this movement um, expand and, and spread so rapidly across borders in such different contexts? And um, traditionally, social movement studies has looked at this type of um, spreading of movements <coughs> through a concept of diffusion, which is really just a very linear concept that says uh, movement A, for instance, the Egyptian revolution, um, uh, transmits uh, a form of organizing or a model of organizing or a certain idea about uh, how to organize or what to criticize uh, to another country, which simply adopts it. And uh, we say that this conception of Diffusion is a bit too simplistic. Uh, the movements that we looked at actually had multiple sources of inspiration. They looked not just to one country and adopted their ideas, but they looked to many different types of social experiments and social movements that have happened over time. And they often built on very local experience, uh, very local movement experience. So in Greece, for instance, um, anarchist uh, practices uh, played a big role in, in feeding into uh, the, the movement of the square. Um, and in Spain, the Ocupa movement, the, the squatting movement, uh, and, and neighborhood organizing movement uh, played a big role in, in shaping the protests there. Uh, while in the United States, there was a, a lot of experience with the global justice movement, or what's also known as the anti-globalization movement, uh, that fed into the protests of Occupy. Uh, and at the same time, all of these cases also shared a number of structural conditions, uh, namely a crisis in the financial system that uh, in the Greek case, led to very high government debt, in the Spanish case, to, to very high mortgage debt and a housing crisis, uh, and in the U.S. case, for instance, to very high student debt. And all of these structural conditions, in one way or another, impinged upon the, pro uh, the protests as we saw them. So instead of just looking at uh, the process whereby um, a movement diffuses from one country to another, we say that when a movement comes about, there's already this potentiality for mobilization that's there. And it merely gets triggered because activists are inspired by action elsewhere. They see something happening. Uh, it resonates with their uh, concerns, with their ideals, with their beliefs, and with their hopes. And this pattern of resonance allows them to activate this potentiality for mobilization that was already embedded, that was already dormant in their own national context. Uh, what happened to uh, the real democracy movement now, after the occupations are over? Uh, I will. I, I remember something that uh, was told to us by an activist at Sindarma Square when we asked him uh, what, whether Sindarma has died and uh, what's the legacy that it's leaving behind. And he said, um, I'll tell you a story, the story of uh, a tree. Imagine a tree and uh, just when it was blossoming, they cut it down. But while it was falling, the cool breeze took away its leaves and uh, it spread it. Uh, all over Greece. So Sidagma didn't die, it spread. Uh, the story of uh, the tree is not just the story of Sindagma, it's the story of uh, the real democracy movement, which uh, from one country, through a process that we called we call resonance, and uh, it resembles uh, sound, uh, sound waves, or the leaves of the tree that spread all over the place, uh, it has been transferred to different places, in different countries, but always uh, demanding uh, the same thing, real democracy, now. And so then a question arises, um, what is real democracy? Um, was the movement that we saw, was that real democracy? The, the squares, the occupations, um, the general assemblies that were held in the squares during the occupations, was that real democracy? We asked the question to Manolis Glesos, who is a very respected uh, war resistance hero in Greece, 89 years old, uh, he once tore the swastika of the Acropolis uh, after the German invasion, and he's still in the front lines of anti-austerity protests in Greece. 
And he has experimented with direct democracy on his own island where he was a mayor uh, many, many years back. And to our surprise, he said, no, this movement wasn't real democracy. Um, it wasn't real democracy because it didn't spread to the neighborhoods yet at that time, and it didn't spread to the working places. Um, but it was very important uh, to realize that this was a lesson in direct democracy that exposed millions of people to a different form of democratic practice, whereby uh, you actually listen to people, you make your decisions on the basis of consensus, you involve everyone, and it's completely open-ended. Um, and you don't allow a very small group of people to run decisions uh, on your behalf. And by exposing so many people to this new practice, the hope is that this movement may um, resonate uh, outwards and inspire people uh, to take this struggle that was already in the squares, to take it to their neighborhoods, to take it to their working places, to take it into their everyday lives, so that they can start restructuring democracy from the very grassroots levels. And that's ultimately the hope that many of these activists, including ourselves, have.